All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking a lot about parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, let's just go back through the basic tenements of it so we can remember exactly what parallel and perpendicular lines are. First of all, it asks us to write an equation, right? So if we're going to write an equation, that means we have to have it in an equation form. So I'm going to say y equals mx plus b. So anytime I'm asking you to write an equation, you know it's going to have to be in the form of y equals mx plus b. But remember, m equals our slope, and b equals our y-intercept, right? So um, on my problem, that's probably the first information I can write down. All right, I know a write equation. I can write down y equals mx plus b, all right? Now the next thing is, it says find a perpendicular line that goes through this point that's perpendicular. Sorry, find a line that goes through negative 3, 2, but that goes through that is perpendicular to y equals x plus 2. So what we need to do is we need to say, all right, with that information, do we can we figure out what the slope and the y-intercept is? Well, the first thing, guys, is we can remember, we can figure out the slope because one thing about perpendicular lines, Perpendicular lines have what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. So what that means is, if I have my slope over here, let's say let's say I'm given a ram slope of one fourth, the reciprocal is four over one. And remember, the opposite means if one is positive, then the other slope is negative. So those are what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. So what here I need to look at and say, well, what is the slope for y equals x plus 2? And this problem is difficult. This problem is difficult because I don't know, there's no number in front of the x. Well, we need to remember that y equals 1 over x plus 2. Right? If there's no number in front of our x, we can assume that 1 is in front of there. Because 1 times x is going to give you x. So I need to look at what is the what is the reciprocal of one? And you can say, well, the reciprocal of one over one is one over one. And since this is positive, to make it opposite, it's going to have to be a negative. So I can say my new slope is y equals a negative one x plus b. All right, my new slope is the opposite of what my original slope is, and it's the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one over one is one over one. Now, I don't need to write, that's eh, okay, I guess I'll leave it in there. So therefore, out of y equals mx plus b, we figured out what the slope is. Now we need to figure out what our y-intercept is. We still don't know what the y-intercept is. The biggest mistake that students want to do is, they want to say your y-intercept is 2. Well, for this equation, your y-intercept is 2. But for a line perpendicular to 2, it's not going to be the same y-intercept. It could be, but let's go and determine if it is. Yes? Well, let me go and show you. Let me go and see. Let's go and determine if it is or not. Because before it can be the term, before it can be the y-intercept of two, we have to see. It's there's one thing it says. It says the graph has to go through negative three and two. So therefore, my graph has to go between negative three and two. So to do that, I can say, well, every point has an x and a y coordinate. So I'll plug in two in for y and 3 in for x. John, could you be cautious? Negative 3, thank you. Plus b. So therefore, I do a negative 3 times negative 1 is going to give me a positive 3 equals 2 plus b. Now, when I solve for b, I'm going to subtract the 3. And I actually get a y-intercept of negative 1. Do you guys see why? My y intercept is negative 1 and it's not 2. So therefore, my final equation is y equals my slope, which is a negative 1, times x, minus 1. So y equals a negative x minus 1. Or if you wanted to write it in slope intercept, y equals negative 1 times x plus a negative 1. But to simplify version, we like that. Any questions on that? The main important thing, guys, about perpendicular lines, you have to understand perpendicular lines have the opposite and reciprocal slope. 
If you can remember opposite reciprocal slopes for perpendicular lines, you'll do very well. Then, just the other thing is to find the y-intercept, you have to plug in the points that your perpendicular line goes through to find your new y-intercept. Okay?